Yes, please. Thank you. All, all the things were done. <laughs> so, welcome to the um, Scandinavian edition of uh, Tableau User Group. Uh, this is um, a new for all. Um, this is then uh, Norway, Sweden and Denmark joining forces together. Um, we have, uh, as you all have seen since you signed up for this, we have um, uh, pre presentations from uh, all three countries and also uh, our friend Simon, the double Zen master, um, coming in a bit later today. And uh, we're uh, topping off the entire evening with a Kahoot, which is a uh, combination of um, the holiday season we're in, uh, Tableau, of course, and if you really would like to win, you have to pay attention to all present presenters today <laughs> to keep you awake. So I'm just saying that now. Um, my name is uh, Tore Levensen, working in uh, CGI in Norway. Uh, I've been a Tableau user for since version 7. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but the T-shirt I have on is a uh, beta tester T-shirt from version 8.2, the Stingray. Uh, they had some some nice names uh, tableau back in the days um i also have a fairly large selection of tableau t-shirts um that will be uh, talked about maybe a bit later um i've been part of the tableau user group in norway for a couple of years uh, and i'm do also doing a presentation uh, in uh, in an hour roughly also with us today from the other uh, user groups um uh, we can go over to Sweden. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. <laughs> Elena, you take it away. I am taking it away. So, uh, hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, so this is me, Elena, as the, um, uh, currently the leader for the Stockholm Table User Group. Um, of course, we are, um, with now being virtual, we're expanding beyond Stockholm, but um, I hope some of you remember me from the April talk we did. And um, as, uh, as Jakob started mentioning as well, we have Jakob straight away with the first um, presentations and he's also part of the community here in Sweden. So uh, pass over to you, Lydia, then. Yes, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm Lydia Lauritsen. I'm the leader of Tableau User Group for Denmark, co-leading with Tobias McDonald's. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you'll have a very lovely season the corona craziness that is going around and uh now to tobias Yes, hi everyone. I um, I work with uh, a company called Inviso. We're a Tableau partner here in Denmark, and um, I used to work at Tableau previously, and now joined uh, joined uh, the the bright side on actually using Tableau a bit more than just selling it. Uh, and I uh, I kind of assist Lydia in some of the the Copenhagen Tableau user group events. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, we'll get back to Simon a bit later. So he put in the uh, in the chat window. Um, you can use the chat window if you have any questions uh, during the presentations that um, Jacob, John Jonathan, me, and Simon will be delivering, and we'll pay attention to that and, and answer either during the presentations or after. Uh, but uh, it's uh, the Tableau version of Eurovision. So um, so Simon is in the UK now. So we'll uh, do some uh, voting uh, in the end, as uh, as we always do in the Eurovision. Uh, so we're not going to spend too much time on chatting because we would like to get started, but we are doing the first um, uh, giveaway or potential giveaway in here. So this picture has been used. Oh, sorry, I clicked F7 twice. Um, this picture is from the um, uh, Tableau conference in Las Vegas last year. Um, this is a lot of the community people, Send Masters, Tableau user, user group uh, leaders, um, uh, ambassadors and so on and so on. Uh, I'm in there somewhere, uh, but also Simon is there. So if you take a screenshot um, from your computer, if you're sitting at a computer or, um, well, it's uh, you can even do it on a mobile phone, of course. And if you manage to find Simon, the first one who sends me a, uh, an email to the email address on top here, uh, where they have circled in Simon, uh, they will win a Tableau t-shirt. So send in your um, name, address and t-shirt size 
uh, and hopefully the correct uh, Simon in here, <laughs> you will get um, a T-shirt in the mail before Christmas, hopefully. So I'll keep this uh, for uh, two more or five more seconds. I uh, really have to... Uh, 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 yeah, I'm there somewhere as well, hidden behind someone, someone's elbow. <laughs> Simon is actually helping you uh, look for the shiny head. So you could see if you can find me and... Uh, and uh, it's not Simon. <laughs> uh, there is a, if I'm uh, understanding the participants window, uh, there's a, is there a hand raised? Does that mean there is a question or, um, um, and if there is, then uh, the question should be put in the chat window and then we could uh, answer from there. I assume it doesn't mean anything else, or it does it? No, you're right there. Um, so people can raise their hands if you're in the audience um, and you have a question, please just pop that into the chat window. And there's also the Q&A box, which you can use for questions as well. But yeah, if you pop those yeah. in there and we'll keep an eye and we'll get them answered. Yeah, we prefer the chat window since we're paying really good attention to that one. So Fabrizio, if you put your question, uh, if you can do that into the chat window, we'll answer that very soon. So with no further ado, I'll minimize this one and uh, I will hand it over to um, to Jacob and he will do the first presentation from um, from Sweden. So just a second. All right, thank you, Tore. Let's see here. All right, hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, please do interrupt if you cannot see it, and I'll, I'll get going. So, yes, hi everyone. My name is Jacob Maddo. I'm here from Daniel Wellington, which is a watch and accessory uh, brand. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about how we created a Black Friday dashboard uh, and made it available to all our employees worldwide uh, through a Teams, Microsoft Teams app and how we set it up and just some, some uh, basic info. Uh, so Danny Wellington, uh, it was founded and it's owned by Philip Tisander. And the story behind it is that he met a British gentleman on a travel to Australia and this British gentleman had a vintage watch together with a NATO strap. Philip was inspired by this design and he uh, used that to uh, create his own watch brand back home in Sweden. And that's how Danny Wellington was born because the name of this man that he met was Danny Wellington. Today we are more than 2000 employees worldwide. We are located in um, 19 different offices uh, around the globe. And we are found in 132 uh, different countries. We are selling watches in 132 different countries. So um, it is truly a global brand and we have this global presence. Uh, so here you can see all the established markets that we are currently in as of 2020. And also worth noticing is that one of the big success factors behind Danny Wellington was our first move into social media marketing or influencer um, using influencers to, to marketing our products uh, and we currently have uh, close to 5 million followers on Instagram so this has been a big part of Danny Wellington's uh, success. So moving on a little bit about me uh, I've been working as a data analyst and later a BI developer I've worked at Danny Wellington for three years um, I enjoy in my private time tennis travel and I'm a huge gardening enthusiast and here to the right you can see a picture of me with my ugliest uh, Christmas sweater I could find. So about our setup, our Tableau setup at Daniel Wellington, uh, we are on Tableau Online. We have uh, roughly 35 creators who are responsible for creating content and uploading it to our uh, online site. We have more than 200 viewers who are consuming that content and uh, around 10 uh, active Explorer licenses at the moment. Uh, so a little bit about background as to the, this whole situation here. So Danny Wellington being a retail brand, 
we see massive spikes in sales and traffic during Black Friday or during the week of Black Friday. Uh, and we have this company tradition to, to be very transparent and, and share the, the performance of the company during this time. So we have previously had these real-time dashboards uh, over the Black Friday performance, and this has been communicated to our employees. And we have a tradition to include everyone, not only the people who have a, a Tableau license, but everybody from a person working in a store to somebody within IT to a person in marketing, everyone should be able to see uh, this performance. So that is the goal. And we, of course, have a lot of different tools for delivering reports. So for instance, business critical reporting, we use Tableau and for monitoring and monitoring and operational stuff, we use tools such as Grafana and Redash. Um, but for this, of course, since not everybody has either a Tableau, Grafana or Redash account, we want to make it available to them somehow. So how have we solved this during previous Black Fridays? Well, we we're actually using a combination of Grafana, which is a, a system monitoring tool primarily, but it can also be used to uh, write SQL towards a database and, and visualize uh, uh, in a very basic way data. We used this Grafana tool together with Airtame, uh, which is interesting because I believe we have Jonathan from Airtame talking about Airtame a bit more after uh, later during the evening. So we would create a dashboard in Grafana and we would push this uh, a URL with Airtame through all to all of our screens around the offices. So remember previously I said we had offices in 19 different countries. So we would put previous years for the Black Friday reporting, we would put this Grafana dashboard up on the screens and people in the offices would look at these screens and they could follow along with the, um, the performance of the company during Black Friday. And it was a, a successful solution. It, and it has been working for the past three years. But then of course, this year we were hit by a global pandemic and we closed down pretty much uh, all our offices. So they were still open, but the, the number of people in the offices are greatly reduced. So it didn't really make any sense to continue down along this solution. Um, so here we said that, okay, we need to find a new solution to this because the office screen is not really uh, valid. So we thought first of all about using potentially Grafana to uh, share like this URL to all of our employees, our 2000 employees. However, the problem is that each URL runs queries individually towards the data warehouse. So that would put way too much pressure on the, the data warehouse. We thought about um, only using Tableau online. So putting a Tableau report onto the online server, create, uh, showing the performance. However, as I mentioned, not all employees have a Tableau license. So we, and we didn't want to exclude people. We looked also into using the Tableau REST API and maybe some JavaScript to embed uh, some report on our internal um, communications website. Um, however, we sort of lacked ex expertise in this field and we didn't really have the time. So what we did was that we, we reached out to a bunch of different departments around Danny Wellington and asked around basically asking um, if they have any suggestions on how we can solve this or if they have any experience with this. Um, and through talking to a lot of different departments, we found that we actually have a lot of tools already in place that we can use to achieve this sort of real time dashboard reporting uh, and make it available to all employees by using the tools you see on your screen now. Um, so without getting too much into the technical details, uh, what we would do is that we would through Snowflake, which is our data warehouse, we would expose data through a Tableau report. We would then uh, subscribe a user to this Tableau report. So we would send a subscription email every five minutes or so. And we would use that attachment by using Power Automate. We would push the attachment onto a SharePoint site. And through there, we would connect Power Apps uh, and through Power Apps, we could connect the SharePoint site into Microsoft Teams. So what is actually happening is that uh, this picture of the report in Tableau is through this uh, flow here being pushed into Microsoft Teams and made available to all our employees worldwide. And what's nice about this setup is, although it looks a bit wonky, uh, it's using products that we already own and it's 
quite easy to set up by using these uh, different tools. Uh, so I'll, I'll dig a bit more into the actual process. So first of all, creating the report, pretty basic stuff. We just created a report in Tableau. Now, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show you the actual report, but it looked a little something like this. I've hidden or skewed all the numbers being showed, so it's not actual data. Um, but here is the report that we're following up the Black Friday performance. So we uploaded that to Tableau online. Uh, so that's the first step of the process. Uh, the next step of creating the subscription, we just set up a subscription through this report. Here we see that I'm subscribing myself or my own user with an image and a PDF file. And that will of course end up in my Outlook as a image. Uh, so now we have this report, it's creating an image in my Outlook every five minutes or so. You can set it up how, how often you like. Uh, and on to the next step. So we want to, whenever we receive this image, we want to push that into a SharePoint site. And for that, we use Power Automate. Uh, and Power Automate is, has a lot of functionality, but they come with these predefined templates, such as the one that I've marked in red here. So this template allows us to save an email attachment to a SharePoint document library. So you create this flow that will trigger every time a particular email lands in your uh, Outlook inbox. So the flow consists of a couple of steps like this. The first step we um, uh, detail how, you know, it, okay, it comes to my inbox. It contains a certain subject filter. It has to go through these conditions. And in the next step, we say for the attachment in this email, um, create a file in SharePoint under the folder path of shared documents. And from here, we create the file into SharePoint and we can actually just, if we want to, we can just embed that image in a SharePoint site. So here was the SharePoint site we created for this. Uh, so we embed an image there and we choose our file. This is the file coming from the Tableau subscription. And voila, we have a report in SharePoint being accessible to all users, regardless of them having a uh, Tableau license or not. This is of course only a static report, but it still serves as a one pager. And uh, What's nice about this is that whenever the subscription is re-triggered, it will actually overwrite the file, this file here, and the image in the SharePoint site, of course, will then update, thus giving the illusion that the data is updated, when in reality, it's just uh, the file being updated or, or replaced with a new file. However, we said that we wanted to put this into Teams, and we saw that when we embedded the SharePoint site into Teams, Teams was actually doing some sort of caching. So we couldn't have like an updated report in there, which is why we choose to do this additional step here. Or it was actually, to be fair, it was actually during one of our demos that we do at Danny Wellington every Friday. We have these sort of technology, business technology demos, and we were showing our, our current setup of having this available in, in SharePoint. And one of our colleagues in the reliability team said, well, actually, you could probably embed that into Teams with some additional steps. And we said, oh, wow, that sounds very interesting. Please show us how to do that. So with some help from him, we used an app or a, a program called Power Apps to get around this whole caching issue so we could successfully put it into Microsoft Teams for all users to see. And Power Apps is a tool that has um, a lot of functionality. Uh, we were simply using it to get around a caching issue, but it the strength of the tool is it's much more than that. But what we did is we created a canvas uh, here uh, and we connected it to the SharePoint site where we have this image file coming from Tableau. Uh, we fetched that file, we put it into the canvas. Um, and here we include in the next step, a, a timer, as you can see here. And we just put the timer to say that whenever this timer, which runs on a 30,000 millisecond, which I believe is five minutes, Whenever that runs out on timer end, it will actually refresh the the image, uh, as you can see from this. Uh, I don't know if it's a bit blurry, but hopefully you can see. So it will refresh this image, and thus we can get around the issue of the caching. And then the next steps we did was we just embedded uh, the link for this Power Apps. We embedded that into the SharePoint site. SharePoint has functionality of embedding Power Apps, so we just put that in there, and Voila, we have a report in SharePoint now that is 
uh, pulling data from a table report through a subscription setup. And we are now ready to push this into Teams. And now I have to admit that I am no professional when it comes to the system administration of Teams. So I wasn't personally involved in this last step of actually getting the this report into Teams, but I've been in contact with our reliability team who did this for us, and they assured me that it was no rocket science. Uh, so if you're looking into something similar and don't know how to do this, I am pretty confident that you could do it quite easily. But to the end result, this is uh, how it looked like. So here we have this uh, the report I've been showing you, uh, and we have this tab that we created here for all our users. Um, so all our users worldwide uh, got this tab here with the Black Friday 2020 report added, and they could just click that, and they would immediately see the report that we have created in, in Tableau. Uh, and it was quite nice having it so close to you know, because people nowadays, we're working remotely, everybody is on Teams all the time, so people could access the report super easily. They didn't have to log into anything. It's right there in Teams. You can just flip it over. If you're having a boring meeting, you can just hop into the um, Teams or the Black Friday tab here and have a look at the performance. We also, of course, included some additional information, such as an explanation for the dashboard, uh, just making sure that we are clear with what is being displayed and that all users are aware of this, how the numbers are calculated, what is what. And here we also had some additional information about some news and some uh, fun facts about Black Friday. And lastly, of course, we had a uh, link to the uh, our Teams channel, our Teams Spock channel here. So if any users were experiencing issues with the dashboard or had questions, they could click here and they would be immediately directed to our Teams channel. So that was the end result. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the retrospective. Um, so the good stuff uh, in terms of delivering this, must say it was quite quickly. I believe it was like seven working days getting the, the whole flow running. Um, the level of expertise that I, that I mentioned before was quite low. I mean, I am a newbie when it comes to using Power Automate and Power Apps, but we were still able to set it up with some YouTube tutorials and just um, common sense. Uh, it has a very low dependency on other teams. Apart from the last step, we can do this all by ourselves. Um, it puts pre minimal pressure on our systems since there's nothing really being queried here. It's just the uh, one Tableau report sending queries to our data warehouse. It, um, it puts minimal pressure on our, our data warehouse. Um, and also all these tools come with pretty good uh, troubleshooting uh, so you could see if something goes wrong, you can quite quickly identify where in the flow something is not working. Um, some of the downsides, of course, I mentioned that the last step of the process, uh, we couldn't control ourselves. Um, the reliability team had to be involved there. And the uh, data is, of course, near real time. It's not actual real time because it depends on the subscription coming from the Tableau setup. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of different steps. It's not very a clean flow. Uh, it's quite wonky in that sense that it includes a lot of different tools. And lastly, of course, it's just a uh, static report. So it's not, you can't interact with it in any way, but it served the purpose for this, which was just creating a report and visualizing and being transparent about the performance. So we saw great engagement from the entire organization. Um, and yeah, some examples of the good stuff. Uh, I mean, I must say this was quite nice working cross-functional like this through Teams. And uh, I highly recommend you all to do the same because we would never have done this without the help of other teams in the organization. And we were just asking around and people were reaching out to help us. Uh, quite nice from our, our own perspective because we learned uh, some new tools such as Power Apps and Power Automate. And when we had this uh, dashboard running, the rest of the BI team could focus on uh, other stuff like business critical analysis instead of having to show data to people because most people were pretty content with just following this dashboard. Um, yeah, and we could focus our time on more uh, interactive reports uh, during Black Friday instead of having to give people sort of regular sales data updates as we've had uh, previous years. 
And yeah, some uh, follow-up statistics. So remember I said that we have a thousand employees, 2000, sorry, employees at Danny Wellington. Well, actually 10, 1000 of those are in China, which are not really part of the Black Friday. So say that we roughly have a thousand employees that are interested in Black Friday and we had 823 unique viewers for this uh, Teams dashboard. So the user adoption is quite high and we had uh, 20,000 or more than 20,000 unique site visits. Uh, and here, this is statistics coming from SharePoint. You can also see if people engage with the app through the desktop or through the, um, the mobile app. And also here you can see which parts of the day the app saw most traffic. So uh, a great success from a user adoption perspective. Um, and we also uh, saw that it was yeah, greatly appreciated by our employees uh, because they felt like it was more accessible than previous years. You know, you have it in your app, in your Teams app all the time. You can look at the numbers whenever you want to. Uh, we got a lot of shout outs from other teams. Um, since we have one global report available to all the employees everywhere, the risk of having an individual analyst maybe in uh, Hong Kong showing their own numbers is a lot less. So you have this sort of one source of the truth, which is really something to strive for, but it's usually quite difficult. And of course, we also got some praise from our CEO, which is always a um, added bonus. You can see the quote here, which is quite nice. So all in all, it was a quite successful um, project. Right, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I added some slides for questions. Uh, I don't know if we take them now or if we do them uh, afterwards. Um, let me see if I can access the chat here. Uh, maybe we wait with uh, the questions. There should be, uh, there's at least one question. Um, uh, in here, will you be using the solution for other use cases or campaigns? Excellent question. And the answer to that is uh, yes, we most likely will. So uh, although we haven't figured out all the uh, uh, sort of small bugs, we need to learn more about how to use this properly. And I'm sure we can streamline it in other ways. The plan is most likely to use this for uh, I mean, we are, are actually already using it for a holiday uh, campaign follow-up. So tracking the uh, the global Christmas sales, so to speak. And we're doing the exact same setup and it's working uh, quite nicely. And once you have this flow set up, it's very easy to change it. You can repoint, uh, you can subscribe yourself to a different report. The flow will still work. Uh, you can have multiple flows. Um, so it's very adaptive in that sense. So to answer your question, yes, we will use it for other uh, reporting. Cool, Perfect. thank you. Perfect, thank you for the presentation. Yes, lastly, before I hand it over, I just have some fun fact. Uh, we have created this uh, discount code for all you nice people here in the Tableau <laughs> user group. So uh, if you feel like purchasing a Danny Wellington watch, Use this um, DVX tug discount code and you will get 15% off on your entire purchase actually, which is quite nice. So um, if you need uh, ideas for Christmas presents, I would say that uh, a watch or a bracelet is an excellent idea. So uh, with that said, uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any further questions or want to reach out to either me or Elena, who are also part of this project, Please don't hesitate to contact us. You can see our email addresses here. We'll be happy to help you set up something similar or just answer some questions related to, uh, to this setup that we used. All right, thank you very much, everyone. And I believe with that, I will hand over the presentation to Jonathan from Airtame. Hey, yeah, thank you, Jacob. Uh, and uh, how wonderful to know that you use everything. Um, uh, um, wait, so yeah, let me jump into my presentation. I 
I haven't used uh, WebEx before. One second. Do you guys see my screen now? I'll take that as a yes. Um, right. So um, Tobias asked me to speak a little bit about uh, how our journey was using Tapo. So not a specific use case, but but more, um, yeah, from from when we decided to to level up our analytics game to 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 now and into the future. Um, so let me get started. Um, yeah, so let me briefly introduce myself, and then I'll tell a little bit about Airtame, what we do, and then I'll get started with the journey, and we can do some Q&A in the end. Um, so I'm, I'm Jonathan. I direct our business intelligence uh, department at Airtame. We're a, we're a seven-year-old company, and I've been with the company for four and a half years. I'm a happy Tableau user and uh, also a very happy Inviso, Inviso customer. Uh, credits to Tobias. Um, right. So at our team, we are all about making screens smarter. Um, so we are this 70 year old company. We are uh, primarily located in Denmark, but have offices uh, in Budapest, New York, uh, California, and have remote people around as well, and uh, have close partners globally. Uh, our production is in Sweden. Um, so some of you might be happy to know that. Um, and yeah, we, we have more than 20,000 customers and have sold uh, uh, quite a few devices. If you, if you ask me, maybe not as many as Danny Wellington, but uh, quite a few devices. And, um, and uh, we power more than 1 million meetings monthly. So what is it that we solve for? We, we, the idea behind the company was that Many companies have, many organizations have screens and cables and have trouble using their screens, whether for presentations or, or just not having a, like behind me here, there's a black screen. How nice would it be if there was something running on that screen? Um, in, in organization use cases, mostly, not, not for home use. Uh, but this, this example you see here of an organization is, um, is a very typical case of what we come in and, and see in an organization. A lot of different uh, admins for different screens. They're set up differently. They have, uh, people may have their own devices. Uh, so there needs to be a whole palette of, uh, of, of uh, adapters to whatever screen you're using. Um, yeah. And what we then try to do is create this one single unified platform where you can have screen sharing whatever device you're bringing to the room. Um, and you can show stuff on the screen when you're not using it actively. Uh, so for example, a dashboard, like Daniel Wellington does with Grafana. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we have a cloud management module where you can uh, access or manage, access and manage all of your devices, all of our devices uh, in your organization. Um, so for example, we have a school district in Texas that has uh, more than 5,000 um, uh, air teams plugged into, well, 5,000 different screens uh, spanning across 28 different locations with more than 100 kilometers between some of those, uh, those uh, facilities. Before our solution, it was a bit difficult for them to, to have a tech team drive around from, from place to place to fix the cables and this and that. Uh, so we're, we're quite happy that we have this uh, cloud management um, module in place for them. And what that does is then it, it creates this uh, one solution for, um, for all your screens. So it's the same thing. You only plug in this device and there's uh, yeah, all your problems are taken care of, um, and you can use uh, you, it. It enables um, you to collaborate better with the screens that you have in front of you. Um, so these are the products we have. The primary product is this Airtem Two, the little round device you see behind or uh, plugged into some screens. Um, then we have the cloud, uh, where you can manage all of these devices, and then we have a. Um, uh, yeah, a variety of uh, accessories and adding more things to that. Um, fun fact, we started, we've been a hardware company for up until this summer. 
well, in June when we launched um, a subscription service uh, for the first time. Yeah, so we're doing that transition now. Um, yeah, and this is sort of, if you take our whole portfolio or the space we're playing in, we want to be uh, the full platform solution for screen sharing, signage, conferencing, and smart office facility management. Uh, and currently we're, we're uh, in the top two left um, screen sharing and signage, uh, expanding fast. Cool. So let's dive into the, yeah, the, the, this purpose of the, this uh, group, uh, our analytics ascent. Um, and this is sort of a rough timeline of two years ago when we decided, actually almost exactly two years ago, we, we had a decision to level up our analytics efforts. And at that time, we had a lot of data, uh, but everything was siloed and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, a, a quite a mess. And uh, yeah, so over the, the course of this, I'll, I'll explain um, the next few slides, but, but uh, yeah, things have really uh, developed for the better. Uh, in parts because of uh, Tableau and, and Inviso. So yeah, let me let me get started from where we we began. And we had a well, we had no proper analytics software. We had this uh, I don't know if you know this tool, Metabase. Uh, it's a good tool to access your data and and query it and or just get an overview of what you have. But its visualization capabilities is, is are quite limited, um, very limited. And we had no people to take care or to produce uh, any dashboards, any queries, uh, none of that. Um, and uh, all the product data was somewhat well functioning, but not uh, the, the whole database setup and, and uh, documentation of the, the, the product analytics that we had wasn't very good. And on the commercial side of the company, we had silos of commercial data, typically not even in a database, but uh, in in uh, in the systems of the given uh, silo, um, yeah, and well, then we from this started a BI department two years ago, and after maybe six months of cleaning up some data and 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 realizing what our actual needs was maybe a bit less than six months we started looking into different uh into different um uh, visualization tools and this is when we were looking at tableau and inviso reached out to us and uh tobias reached out and he he showed me this uh this graph that i to 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 this day remember uh opening my mind uh quite a lot it um yeah it's from gartner i believe correct me if i'm wrong but uh, it shows the sort of maturity of your analytics scheme in a given organization and what you are able to then do with your analytics and at the time uh we were discussing or uh, to be as asked where we are in this and i might have said something like ad hoc analysis in reality we were probably a bit further down than that so, but i didn't want to uh, Thought it was quite embarrassing um and this sort of began our journey upwards this maturity curve um and um and we went with uh tableau uh as the sorry uh, we went with tableau as the um as the uh, visualization software that we we wanted to use uh and started transferring over all the things that we had created in, in metabase and uh, had also in, in various other uh, sort of, yeah, decentralized individual or independent um, uh, teams we're using. And we, yeah, we realized how advanced analytics you really can do with, uh, with Tableau. And, and I'm going to give some examples in the next few slides. So one thing that we do now is we have this account proximity dashboard where we, uh, we learned that it's it's great to name drop these huge companies uh, that are global and and uh, like if you mentioned oh Coca Cola uh, people will think oh okay you're you're definitely a, a solid solution but what is also great is if you show their neighbor if you show their their 
comparative school uh, in the same city or um, yeah, uh, the people in the same building as you in, in a high rise in Manhattan or something. Um, so we have this account proximity dashboard where you can look up a given accounts and, uh, and then you can see which accounts do we have that are, that are using, uh, well, how are they using your product and, and how much, uh, how many, how big a uh, company or how big a customer are they of ours and how close are they to the given account that you're looking at. Uh, so it's for sales to use, but it's also for marketing to use. We have a lot of these geofence campaigns. If we're, we, we target uh, about to close um, or, or sort of if we, if a, an account manager reaches out to marketing, we have this process set up and tells marketing that, oh, we're, we, we need some help closing this account. Uh, they're sort of in the deciding phase. Um, then we do a geofence on, for example, a school and uh, spam them with advertising. Suddenly, this is uh, every team is on top of mind for not even only the decision maker makers, but maybe for a school, it will be every single student in that school will suddenly have seen everything. Uh, yeah, uh, and that we we find that that works uh, pretty well. Uh, another example uh, uh, is uh, that before launching uh, this uh, soft, uh, SaaS software that we did this year. We we created this. Uh, we we did. We wanted to know what is in sort of the go to market strategy. We wanted to know who are who can set us off to a great start. So we created this matrix of uh, plus or uh, given based on the plus plus ratio. Uh, so how how active they are in um, in uh, the the apps that we're going to be paid, and how active they are across all of the devices they have, how much did they use them? So we gave them a, a score or a percentage uh, on the two axis, and then we defined uh, every single customer, where are they here? And we created these clusters, or we just uh, highlighted an area, took those customers, and if they were, for example, uh, non-active, uh, then we should probably not uh, right away sell them, upsell them something, but have a sort of some technical help, uh, help them get started and, and set up. Uh, and then once, or also the, the active customers at the time, we could then to those upsell this, uh, this new product. Um, and, um, and yeah, and then I also mentioned here that we were able to, to find some high value uh, non-active customers that we wanted to sort of give some more attention uh, so they wouldn't go with another solution or or uh, not buy our plus or, or subscription products. Another example is for, we're actually at the core of our company, we produce all our goods. So um, we, we, we have a very little part of our business is software uh, compared to the full picture. So we, we have to analyze our production a lot and Tableau was able to help us with this. Um, so we, we have, um, set up tracking for all the steps in the whole production process. We now test or have indicators for each step. And if, uh, if for a certain period of time, uh, a test has passed uh, X percent uh, of times or X percent of, yeah, uh, through this, through a period of say a month, if some quality assurance step is being passed 99% of the times, then that quality assurance step is probably not needed. So we could get rid of that. Um, which is amazing uh, because it saves us money. Um, and, um, and yeah, we, we have this full overview of, uh, of our production. Uh, then we've recently launched this, uh, well, because we're a B2B company, we sell mostly through our, um, some channel partners. We sell hardware. It's hard to track exactly our customers' movements um, and, and, thus attribute dollars in sales to marketing campaigns. We needed to sort of, um, yeah, really invest in a, in, in a custom B2B attribution model. And, uh, and we found that the, the past few months and, and uh, have created this, um, yeah, this, this custom model where we are able to, to, uh, to better, not perfectly, but better attribute uh, value to different campaigns and find 
what campaigns have actually been uh, been efficient uh, and should we move money around? Is there a better return on investment on Google than Facebook? Or uh, yeah, you know how the drill is. Um, and then we have some aggregated product usage for, for um, product councils, um, team leads, different leadership groups to, to look into how is the product used uh, in order to answer some questions if they're, if they're wondering whether whatever they should go uh, rearrange a roadmap um, or, um, or if they're looking to, um, if we want to know in the past quarter, where have we been the most uh, successful in, in uh, onboarding new customers? Different stuff like that uh, is something we've uh, done with Tableau. Um, and uh, yeah, a recent thing that we also started looking into is this streaming rating that we have normally as sort of an indicator, just a global indicator to see how much money we should put into increasing the, the, the standard streaming quality of uh, when you're using our product. Um, but we found from these uh, analysis, we found that it is actually typically a perceived poor quality uh, by certain organizations that are dragging down um, this 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 uh, total score. Uh, overall, we have a very very high score, but we wanted to know why why isn't it uh, improving? And it turns out that certain uh, organizations are always um, uh, rating. Uh, lower, uh, and then the it's it's sort of like outliers are are rating it lower, and now we've reached out to those with technical help because typically that means that they have a poor network setup, uh, or it might be that there's something wrong with their setup, and still we need to reach out to them and help them. Um, we have some some yeah we we keep track of our vendor payables. We have some different sub licensors for for some of the software, uh, and we we have this partnership with AirServer. We keep track of how much uh, how much uh, money do we owe them for the use of their licenses. We have some different backlog and inventory tracking across our own uh, warehouses and our distribution partners' warehouses, as well as a timeline overview of when. POs are placed, how much money uh, has, is, has been shipped, but is yet to be counted as a revenue, so in, trans in transit. Um, yeah, and, and if there are clusters, so we see, we found, uh, or was able to, to analyze a bit and found that uh, partners uh, place orders at the end of every month, um, which helped us make some business decisions around, uh, yeah, that. Um, not to go too, too deep into it. This is a uh, yeah, sales uh, dashboard where a salesperson can go in and uh, select some different variables uh, or by default, ba ba based on who logs into this dashboard, it'll show uh, the given salesperson's territories, uh, vertical, um, their primary customers and states uh, and, and have a, a spit out a number of how much uh, they received or are to receive in commission for the given uh, period that they've chosen. Um, and they found that to be to be very motivating uh, and this ability to sort of dive into an interactive um, map um, engaged them a lot. Uh, yeah, so coming back to this timeline, uh, the, the primary thing I actually want to say that Inviso and Tableau has helped us do. Um, so Tableau in the beginning, um, up until say uh, late 2020, maybe mid mid 2020 more, um, was was investigate all this data that we have and now anal analyze it, use it in our in our business decisions, um, and then more and more we realize that many of our internal processes are flawed, and these processes are some of what is making the data that we're looking at or some of the data we are having trouble looking at making that flaw. Um, so that whole realization and learning can be uh, accredited to, to Tableau and, and Inviso for helping us. Inviso uh, especially as well, because they've been uh, helping us a bit and came to our offices and, and spoke with us um, about some of those processes. Um, yeah, so we're having at the top of our agenda now to level up those processes. Um, 
in order to to take the next step uh, of of higher level analytics uh, and hopefully reach this uh, this point where uh, analytics is a decision engine, uh, not only answering questions but spitting out suggestions uh, by itself. Uh, yeah, that uh, um, is uh, concluding my presentation. I see you guys. Yeah, so if you have any questions, else uh, my email is, is quite simple, jonathan at airtain.com. Um, if you have questions there, you're, you're feel free to shoot as well. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody, is there any questions? I don't see any in the, in the chat at the moment. I have a question, maybe a bit of a leading question, but um, uh, so you obviously cover like a, a, a broad range of different uh, use cases. Is that being like driven by people in the business or is, is it like you and your team kind of giving suggestions to people in the different departments? It is uh, both. We, we certainly have sort of a, a centralized analytics department um, that spits out ideas and, and suggestions for different things that we know the data can show. Um, but that is a, a loop. It gets the ball rolling and, and every time a, a, some person in the company has an idea, uh, they can come to us and, um, and with that idea, we'll, we'll together create um, some new insights. Cool. Okay, thank you, uh, Jonathan. Then I'll uh, pass it on to myself <laughs> and share my screen. I just have to say that uh, we're still waiting for the correct answer uh, of where's Simon in here. Uh, I've got several emails uh, already. Um, uh, it's correct that you have found somebody with um, the same amount of hair. Uh, and I'm actually not sure uh, myself uh, who most of you have picked. It's uh, either uh, either one of the um, Flerages, or how do you, I can't re remember how you pronounce the Flerages twins, um, Kevin or Ken. Uh, so uh, many of you have chosen chosen either one of them uh, at least so uh, you still have the time to take a <laughs> yeah I agree um, I agree Simon um, but um, yeah it's not Kev or Kevin so um, please try again take a screenshot and send it over to me and and hopefully we will be able to um, able to get a get a winner before um, the end of uh, our session today so I'll go all the way to the left hand side in there. And uh, my presentation uh, is now, um, this is based on the feedback from, uh, from uh, a lot of um, uh, people and customers uh, over the time is that sometimes they uh, upgrade uh, very fast. Sometimes, well, yeah, some, some people do and some people are actually upgrading like 10 uh, versions at a time. So they really don't attention to what is released in each and every version. And since 2018.1, which was released in April 2018, which is fa fairly long time ago, uh, there has been um, a lot of uh, features uh, that have uh, been released with Tableau. Some huge one, ones and some small minor ones that people sometimes tend, uh, tend to miss. Uh, something, that, something that I often see also when when delivering training that I'm showing this and this small little feature and it's like, wow, I didn't know about that. So that's uh, hence this, um, this presentation. So I'm going to go from 2018.1 up all the way up till 2020.4, which I, I asked Tableau if they have a release date. Only thing they said that it will be before Christmas. So it's just around the corner. Um, but this 2018.1, some of the highlights um, in there. Um, uh, this uh, workbook, by the way, will be shared afterwards, so um, you don't have to take uh, notes of everything in here. But there are some small things like um, step lines and jump lines. Um, uh, 
that uh, I think we saw in, I'm not sure if I saw some of those in, in the, the previous uh, presentations, but as long as you have a line, you can change the, the uh, line type um, in, uh, in the marks card, for example. Um, I also like, um, uh, if I manage to, um, I think I actually have to go all the way up and then click on it uh, on here. Um, the, the filter on high, uh, high, high hierarchy, so high, high, this was really difficult. I only be drinking water, by the way. But you can read yourself. Uh, don't make it too difficult on me. So filter on, on the data that are in a hierarchy, uh, to put it uh, easier for me to say. Uh, so if you create a hierarchy, uh, you have different um, dimensions, you can then click on this and it will only filter on what's in the hierarchy. So it really helps uh, in speeding up and make it easier to do um, to do filters. Um, also, one small thing is to hide the VIS in tooltip worksheet. It's something you can do with uh, all the sheets that you have in a dashboard or a story. Uh, and of course you can do that or could do it then finally in here. Uh, it's not a big uh, thing, but it's always uh, what happens with Tableau when they release something that is really exciting. Finally, we can have uh, this in tooltips and then they just release it and then uh, either by uh, a lot of feedback from uh, from us or the users uh, or consumers or whatever uh, or uh, internally then they add those small little things uh, that uh, why can't we just hide those uh, things well then it comes in the next or the next or the next um, um, the next release. Uh, one thing that was really nice when it came back in the days was was create dual access layered maps which we to at that time um, thought it was really great. But today, when we know what's coming in 2020.4, we just laugh of this because now we can put as many layers as we want into into maps and other other uh, visualizations. So I'll get back to that in the end of um, this presentations, this presentation. So this is some of the things from 2080.1. 2080.2, uh, one of the best features is that the Tableau web page actually show the feature for each release now. You don't have to go to the help menu. So just by getting um, getting that updated, um, I really uh, have to say I like that. Um, it was in, um, introduced also this um, dashboard extensions. So the dashboard uh, extension gallery where you can add in uh, either um, extension that you create yourself or some other people, or, sorry, companies are creating or uh, Tableau has been creating, uh, which is really brilliant. There's so many good things in there. Unfortunately, uh, some people like to take uh, take uh, money for some of these extension, but then again, they have uh, developed uh, developed those. So you have to have to make sure that you um, you pick the ones that you can uh, really can use or can afford uh, in there. Um, one thing that I really like that also came in in 2080.2 is the um, ISO weeks. This is something that uh, for an American company, uh, really they, they really didn't care when it comes to the weeks that we use in Norway or the Nordics. So um, when you're adding um, the order a year and week of order date, we see that we have 2011, we have week one, we scroll all the way down, we have suddenly have week 54 in 2012. That has never ever happened um, in Norway uh, or the Nordics before or after, uh, I have to say. So they finally, uh, we could have do the some calculated field, but we can also right click on these blue pills, change to to week based, um, um, following the ISO 8601. We see now that we don't have any week 54. We don't even have week 53. So uh, we can now follow the um, the uh, the proper calendar. Uh, something that came a bit later because they introduced this in 2018.2. Uh, and then first in 2019.3, you could right click on your data source and you could go to date properties and you could um, even decide that the default calendar should be ice based. So they release something that is great, but you still would like to have more and more and Tableau always delivers in the end. Um, it was also introduced spatial joins uh, in that um, uh, in that version where you could uh, join um, different types of spatial data, uh, not uh, relationships that came later. So we're going to talk about uh, that a bit later when it actually was released. But we could drag in 
two different um, shape files like this. We could do a uh, fill auto join and we use this intersects between the ge geometry in here and then we could do our nice little uh, visualization in here. So I think I have some population data from uh, Japan. I put that on names and of course since I now still have the old version I need to take a copy of my latitude in here and on the other um, um, other um, uh, or the copy rather on the marks card I can put in the the new geometry which in this case is the the ferry lines that everybody is of course taking uh, when they're traveling to Japan and then we do a dual axis and we have two fantastic layers of data or spatial data in Tableau as as I talked about we'll get back to the, that uh, a bit later uh, we also uh, Tableau introduced transparency and transparency in dashboards, which makes it a lot more fun to create a lot more sexy and uh, interactive and nice looking dashboards. So we have some data uh, in here inside of the coffee cup. Uh, and let's see if I can, um, if there's any interactions in here or if it actually has uh, gone sour, this coffee. But well, there's a picture in the background. We have a pie chart uh, on the top. So this this um, transparency is something that really, really have made a lot of uh, much nice, nicer looking and better looking uh, dashboards. Not going to go into nested sorting, but oh my God, how nice hasn't it been when you can actually just click on this pill uh, or click on this pill up here and it's sorting if you have several dimensions next to each other and you don't have to add in a ranking or whatever else you needed. So we're already on 2018.3. So what is some of my um, favorites in there? Well, as you can see, there's a lot of things. Um, set actions, for example, um, uh, came in there, but just having this navigation navigation button we have down here is something that makes us uh, makes life a lot easier when you want to na navigate back and forth inside of a, a dashboard or a workbook from dashboard to dashboard. We can drag in. Well, let's make it floating for now. You can drag in this navigation and you can either put in a picture uh, or a text in here instead of having to create a you know, separate sheet and do all this. Um, uh, have to click uh, maybe two times to make it work, which is frustrating. And especially when you have to explain this to to someone that uh, you can't just add in a button. So that came in 2018.3. Also, uh, the marks uh, on the marks card in here, we have this density. Uh, which is uh, causing some nice uh, looking um, uh, visualizations in Tableau. Very nice if you have a lot of uh, marks uh, on the same spot or close to each other, and you can really spot the uh, the um, the ones that uh, pop out uh, in there. So the density uh, on, on heat maps. Um, of course, set actions, uh, it's such a big uh, concept that I've just added, uh, added a blog uh, from uh, Bethany Lyons in here when she was uh, before she started working on the the noodles so the um, the uh, the relationship but uh, it works uh, in a bit nicer better way than or in a different way than than uh, than filters so these set actions uh, there's a lot of good examples um, just scroll down to one uh, that's in here where you can use the set actions to drill down uh, in a, in a bar chart for example from from the group to the uh, in this case, uh, the um, the teams, and then you can see all the players, uh, and then even lower down. So set action makes a lot more uh, functionality and, and flexibility uh, in your visualizations. I only have 25 minutes, so I have to speak fast and go through this. So now we're on 2019.1. Um, then uh, Ask Data was released, where people who really don't know much about uh, using Tableau or using uh, or uh, dragging, even uh, think that drag or drop is uh, difficult. Uh, we can then go into, I'm just going to see if it actually, um, I still connected in here, um, where we can go in our Tableau, uh, Tableau server, uh, we could go to a um, data source that are published. And when I click on this data source, uh, we have this ask data uh, window open. Uh, which hopefully will log in and uh, I'm now connected to a superstore uh, data. We can hover over all the different um, 
dimensions and measures. We can see the values or the domain values and, and uh, what's inside of each of these. And we can ask questions. So we can ask about uh, the sum of sales, for example. So we can write in sentences um, in, in Tableau. So you don't have to drag, drag or drop. And then everything crashes. No, we get a nice little view of all our um, uh, all our sales, and we can uh, do that by city. So we can add more and more questions into um, uh, into um, the um, the uh, the visualization. And you see on the right hand side, I can change this from a map to a bar chart to different types of visualizations, and I can save this and and uh, reuse it or start a new sheet and ask more questions. So ask data, really nice feature. Uh, on the server also, um, we got uh, as an ad addition, uh, of course, you have to pay a bit more money to get some server add-on, but then you get uh, finally the Tableau Prep Conductor. So now you can get the your all the flows that you've been creating in Tableau Prep Builder to be scheduled uh, on the server as well. Uh, really nice. Uh, the the um, zone names and people who have been working on uh, or working with uh, dashboards, uh, just that layout um, next to the dashboard or the uh, the quick um, shortcut, clicking on the T button, then you go from dashboard to layout, and down, then down here on the hierarchy, you have hopefully you are using a lot of these uh, horizontal vertical containers. Really frustrating when you have 200 uh, of them. But now you could start to, if I manage to um, find one of them and um, and rename the dashboard item, so you can actually have a proper name on your um, on on your um, containers as well. Contains data. Uh, also in the um, worksheet, uh, sorry, dashboard actions. When it comes to uh, URLs. We can actually have uh, the target in here, if I zoom in a bit, a web page object where you have different objects inside of your dashboard. Before, you could only have um, a dashboard um, action for a, for a URL, which opened up just one web page or one um, uh, other different uh, dashboard. So in this case, I have two really nice name web on both of these. So I can have one web page in here, and then if I go to URL and say on the other one, let's do tableau.com. Tab, uh, written wrong, so we'll get an error mes message. I really don't care. Let's see if it works. I think it's from this one. If I click on this, I have the I didn't give it a name. So hyperlink four is opening up on the left hand side, right hand side, sorry, and uh, hyperlink five is opening up on the left hand side. Tableau.com, uh, this is for sale, so you can buy this uh, domain name if you like. The sort of uh, changes on the server as well, uh, layout uh, on the server, uh, seems, seems that I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm logged out of that one, so um, I'll just skip it for now. 2019.2, uh, um, the uh, the biggest um, uh, one of the biggest one is the parameter actions uh, that we have in here uh, that came. Uh, there's a lot of new content uh, how we browse or how we browse the server where we have the explore and favorites and recent um, on the left hand side in here uh, makes it even easier to use the Tableau server as the portal even though it's really not the best uh, web portal I've ever seen uh, in any tool, even though I love Tableau, uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, but para parameter actions, uh, once again, there is so much uh, information about this, but uh, we have, um, uh, I've added a couple of these um, uh, links in here um, from uh, a blog from Tableau and from these two uh, brothers, the twins that everybody uh, thinks uh, that is Simon, uh, they have a, a really great uh, fun with Tableau uh, parameter actions. Um, among them, uh, let me just find uh, one example that I like down here, um, where you have um, a map uh, and you can, and, uh, hopefully this GIF is moving or is it, there you go, sorry. Uh, you can click on a map and you can clip, uh, click on a start and end point on a map and then you get a, a nice little line between these and then you can reset, uh, reset this as well. So that's parameter actions. 
uh, and I'll scroll a bit further. Uh, there's a lot of spatial calculations that have and Tableau is adding more and more and more. Um, uh, not all of them came in 2019.2, but I have a list of uh, some of them over here where we have a buffer calculation where we have the, the buffer. We have the destination where we use the make point so we can make a point on uh, latitude uh, so we can get a start point and an end point and then we can create a line from the from the beginning uh, to the end where we use the make line um, function so tableau is adding a lot of these um, uh, geographical um, geographical um, uh, calculations as well here is an example of the uh, one we finally got the show and hide uh, container. So if we are creating a floating container, we can show uh, and hide it. So uh, I've used it a lot in adding or showing and hiding filters. So I I would like to have the data to to be shown on the view, and then you can add in uh, a, a, a show and hide container either using a button or a picture or a, or a text. In this version, I've added a the instructions in here. So when I click on this, you're now showing the, the container. And in the container, I put a picture, which is basically just a screenshot of the visualization, and then add a, then toned it down a bit, and then added some lines and some text in here. So now you can see the visualization, you can see the how to use it, and then you can go back uh, to your uh, original view uh, in here. 2019.3, we got the explain data. Uh, so when you hover over uh, any point in, in your, your view, we can zoom in a bit here, you get this nice little, um, nice little light bulb, which says explain data. When you click on explain data, there's some um, artificial intelligence in the background uh, going through all your data and trying to explain why is there uh, why is there is an outlier or why is there some um, some values that are higher or lower than expected and you see in this particular one uh, i do get um, different uh, visualizations and expl explanations either on the it could be the weather condition it could be the number of records it could be the whatever in here um, uh, let's see, and if you are happy or we want to reuse this in your visualization, we can scroll down and we can click on this and then we, you have a new sheet um, that you can work uh, on changing some or adding some, um, some filters or whatever you like. So let's see, uh, I was in there explain data. I'm just going to check my notes, see what else uh, I would like to mention from that one. Uh, we are now on 2019.3. That was number two. Number three, uh, the Tableau, Tableau catalog was also released uh, in here. So I'm just going to go one step back. That's where we have the um, uh, the um, uh, the uh, lineage we can look at uh, inside of uh, of Tableau. If you have a, a data source, you can go in and look at it and see how many um, uh, workbooks, uh, how many extracts, uh, how many uh, whatever you have on your server will be impacted if you modify uh, something in that uh, that uh, data source. Um, there's a lot of other small things in there: PDF attachments to to subscriptions, web editing for Tableau Public. That's a very nice thing that a lot of people, uh, I think, uh, like and and use. Um, and also uh, in Tableau Prep, where we could connect to published data sources um, as well. I'm getting um, uh, getting close to the end. Uh, just one year of releases to go. So really quickly now, because my time is uh, uh, is running out. One thing that Tableau calls a uh, feature or release is the big table, where you actually now can have 50 columns. I'm not sure if I will say that this is a this is a nice feature uh, because you shouldn't have 50 columns of data, but now we can at least scroll in there and make it um, make it uh, nicer. You can also now right click on any uh, sheet and if it says used in all the way down here, it means that you can see if a sheet is used in whatever dashboards uh, in there. One thing that I was really happy about in 2019.4 is creating extracts in the browser. 
Of course, there's some hacks and workarounds and adding some filters, but plenty of customers and people have been doing the, okay, I have to create the extracts locally and then publish it, taking all like 250 million records down on their lo local laptop, coming back three days later and then publish it to the server. So thank you Tableau for, for adding, uh, adding that one. 2020.1, um, uh, no, um, uh, nothing can beat dynamic parameters. Finally, you can have a parameter that is not static. That's something that's been on the top of the ideas list for, for on Tableau, the Tableau webpage for, well, since parameters were introduced. So dynamic parameters, finally. Um, I'll just go through this one. This one didn't work properly earlier today, but the, the, um, yeah, this animation, it's actually not uh, animating as I was hoping for, but animation was added into Tableau where things are moving very nicely. If you, if you click, uh, click on things, apparently it didn't work today. So that's how it's uh, supposed to be. Also mentioning because a lot of people, especially when you do training, the first thing they ask, so this is all nice and beautiful, but how can I export this to Excel or whatever? Well, now we have the download button down here um, where you can drag this one in and you can then decide uh, or uh, modify this to be a PDF, cross tab, image, PowerPoint uh, di directly into the view as well. 2020.2. Um, relationships, relationships, relationships. That's basically uh, what happened uh, there as the biggest highlight. For those of you who really would like a deep dive into this, go to YouTube and find Norway Tug's previous um, uh, virtual meeting where Miko from Finland uh, presented, um, presented this uh, a lot more in detail um, over 45 minutes. But just a quick um, mentioning there because people people and customers have thought that okay now i can only create relationships in here so you can you when you drag in a um, drag in a new uh, table you get this noodle in here and where why can't i do any joins anymore because i, I still want to do it the old-fashioned way because i love sql and i love to create uh, inner joins and left joins well you just double click on an existing table and then you can drag and drop as you have been doing since uh, forever and you have the normal normal join window uh, in here so that was relationship uh, also uh, set values um, i don't have time to go into that because i need to finish up so simon can have his uh, have his time as well 2020.3 um a lot of features uh, there as well, uh, fairly new. Uh, that's the version that is released uh, for for today. Uh, one of the big ones is to write to external databases from Tableau Prep, um, uh, Microsoft uh, SQL, Oracle, Amazon Redshift, Snowflake, Teradata, Postgres, SQL, and my uh, SQL uh, are supported today. Uh, if you have something else you would like to write uh, to, uh, Tableau most likely will add it, that soon in the future. Um, there are some simple, uh, simple small things as well. If you're searching for something uh, on the left-hand side, um, uh, you can then decide uh, or you can filter by calculation, dimensions, measures, comments and parameters and everything in here if you have some, some matches. Makes it a bit easier to find stuff. Still a bit frustrated though that um, Norway changed all their uh, states from uh, uh, 18 to 11 and they work in Tableau. Uh, I gave them the data so they managed to fix it eventually uh, late in the year. But if you zoom in here, this is only important for people from Norway of course. But if you look in the background here, uh, we are still using a map box. So the old lines or the uh, state lines are still in map box in the background. So map box. Uh, we don't like you when you don't fix things. Um, there is um, 2020.4, which will be coming very soon. Uh, so on the coming soon page, you will see that we can now have Tableau Prep Builder in the browser. That's going to be cool. Uh, I've talked about multiple mark layers for, mo uh, for maps. And uh, yes, it's not only for maps, it's also for whatever visualization that you have in here. So if I go to this um, dashboard, 
Superstore Executive KPA dashboard that I found uh, stolen from the internet. Unfortunately, uh, I can't remember who uh, I have put it out there because then uh, the name should be in there. Uh, but you can see on the left hand side on the marks uh, card, you see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on layers down here. And for all of these layers, you can turn them on uh, or off. And you can, of course, set in uh, on each of these layers, uh, colors, uh, fonts, uh, what type of, uh, should it be a line or should it be a bar, uh, and so on. And to, um, uh, so even though it's built to be uh, for, uh, or was built to be, uh, yeah, thank you, Adam McCann, that's true. Um, uh, this one is made by uh, Mark Reed. Uh, this is showing a map uh, of, uh, is it London? And we have charging points, supermarkets, road noise, flood, uh, flood, flood, <laughs> flood, planes, uh, blah, blah, blah. So we have six or seven layers of, in one map. We don't, previously we could only have two uh, kind of built in, the, in there. So what's coming in the future after 2020.4? Go to pre-release.tableau.com, pre uh, sign in, and you will always be able to have uh, the beta version of the, uh, the upcoming new versions of Tableau, desktop, uh, prep, uh, and everything else in there. So that's a, that's a um, suggestion to all of you. So that should be um, the end of uh, my presentation, just a couple of minutes uh, uh, over. Um, I'm still waiting for you to find Simon. Could have, could have been that I've gotten a lot of uh, emails now during my presentation. Um, is there any questions before I set over to um, to um, to Simon yeah, in the chat window? Let's see. Um, you're shaking your head. So you have seen? Have you seen? The, there was no questions. No. Okay. Um, I'll. Um, just pay attention to emails or uh, your the local Tableau user group um, channel and um, this presentation and the other ones will be will be um, presented over there. So, Simon, uh, you are here. I can see you. You're hidden um, behind the hand. Uh, I can also give a hint that it's on the right side of the picture. Right side of the picture. <laughs> so I'll pass it over to you, Simon. The, there you go. Thank you very much. Um, if you can just confirm when you can see my screen, that would be really appreciated. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you. Cool. So um, thanks, everyone, for the kind introductions um, today. And thanks for allowing me to join you for your um, first ever joined up Scandinavian tug. So it's great to be with you. Um, I'm going to share with you one of my passions. I lead JLL's global centre of excellence. So JLL is a corporate real estate company. We've got nearly 400 analysts around the globe. I'm responsible for about 100 to 150 of them. And one of the things that's really stood me well in my career, and I think ever since really I started using Tableau five years ago in the NHS and the National Health Service in England, my perception of data has changed from being one of a self-service automation IT driven approach to being one of data enablement. So it's not just our responsibility as BI professionals to deliver content, it's also our responsibility to empower our people to ensure that we have a data culture so that we can leverage the benefits of that data and the benefits of our dashboard. So that's something that's really um, stood me in good stead over my career. So today I'm gonna share with you a bit of a fun quirky take on 24 tips to empower your people. Um, 24, purely because I've decided to um, embrace the festive spirit and present it as an advent calendar. Um, and all of the content you see today is available now on my Tableau public profile. So if you want to be able to go and view this for yourself after the talk, please don't hesitate to do so. So I'm going to start with tip number one. Why do we need a data culture? To be blunt, having great tech is no longer enough. There are so many companies that have got Tableau, have got Alteryx, maybe something else beginning with power and ending with BI. Um, but ultimately, companies are investing in platforms. 
If you want to stand out and you want to have a unique selling point, either to attract talent, retain people, or even just deliver better benefits to your organization, you have to stand out from the crowd. And for me, the way you can stand out is by having a data culture, because that is our way as BI professionals of adding value to the products that we deliver, which are technical products through analytical solutions. So the first way I would suggest to go about creating a data culture is to set a vision. Agree a vision with your people. And when I say your people, that's both your analysts, so they believe in the strategy and the vision of what they are achieving, but also your stakeholders. Because if you agree a vision with your stakeholders, they'll be far more likely to be bought into that vision and far more likely to give you backing and approval when you need to get engagement to support you on that journey. And the one thing I would encourage is use terminology and words that are easy for people to understand. So veer away from the technical and focus on how can I share my vision in language that a non-technical person could understand. So in JLL, as an example, we use the vision of we're here to support people to see and understand their data. You might be familiar with that one because to be blunt, we've taken it from Tableau. So if it isn't broke, why, why bother reinventing it? So the vision is the high level statement of why are we in this organization and what are we trying to achieve? But if you define your values, you also define how you want your people to behave and engage with data. So we use terminology such as curiosity, integrity, and honesty. So we also want people to use their data positively. So what we're trying to do is move away from the traditional tick box exercise of are we green, move on, or the stakeholders ask for a pie chart and so we'll give them a pie chart. And what we're trying to do is empower our analysts and our people to ask questions of their data so that they can go beyond just the traditional kind of sub, almost subservient, we're IT, they're the stakeholder, they raise a request, we do it. By having defined values, you're encouraging it to become a collaboration and a partnership. So we're seen as equals and we're subject matter experts that are supporting the business to add value. So we've defined our values. Lastly, on the strategy part, I would encourage you to develop a roadmap. Define your immediate, medium, and long-term priorities. This is your way of saying to people, this is what we are going to deliver as a BI department. So your analysts will know what their expectations are, but the business will know that that is aligned to their goals. And one of the things I would encourage you to do is be transparent with your roadmap and promote it within your stakeholders. So that means that they don't view it as BI dictating what the priorities are, they view it as their roadmap and they've got an opportunity to input into the priorities. So we're at tip number four, and hopefully some of the themes that are coming out are, you may have noticed, collaboration and partnership, because ultimately this is trying to achieve this sense of common purpose between both analysts and the business. So number five, once you define all that, do not be afraid to steal like an artist. There are so many amazing people in the community that have been there and done it before. When I first uh, leveraged Tableau five years ago, trust me, I pretty much read Paul Benoob's blog every single day of the week, and I just took the bits of that that worked for my organization. So much of what we do in JLL is driven by great stuff that's shared by the community, and we leverage that and we are not ashamed to learn from it. If it's been done great, don't be afraid to just simply use it, tailor it for your needs, but reach out and actually recognize that people have contributed to it. Because actually, if you're learning from the best, you give yourself credibility internally because your approach has already been proven to work. So it will help be able to sell your vision to your stakeholders. So we've talked about number one to five was about your strategy, your roadmap, your vision. How do you define what you're going to do? But the next 10 or so tips are focusing on a data culture is so much of it is about people. 
So how do you invest in your people? And the first people I would like to draw attention to are your analysts. So how do you maximize their potential by giving them the ability to learn on the job? So I just want to state the obvious. Tableau does not build dashboards itself. It relies on an analyst to work in Tableau desktop and to build content. So the dashboard is only as good as the person that is developing it. If you recognize the value your analysts add, recognize that it's beneficial for you to invest in their personal development. Not only will it give you better analytics, but it will also improve retention and attract talent. So you're creating something that you are giving something back to your staff in terms of their ongoing professional development. And we're going to explore some of the techniques to be able to do that. So the first thing I would suggest to do is create governed frameworks. So this is just about saying that if you've got, whether it's be a team of five, a team of 10, or a team of 150, like I'm responsible for, create consistency in the way people work so that you're creating a process that complements your people. So this isn't about creating robots. It's not about saying that they've all got to work and design exactly the same dashboards. Pretty much in JLL, we can say you can do whatever you like in terms of chart choices, as long as it's not a pie chart. Um, but actually, what we're trying to do is say to our analysts that if you need to approach tasks such as requirements gathering or development cycles or release processes, you shouldn't have to come up with your own approach to that. The organization should empower you with here's the process, you adopt it, and we will empower you to give you the skills. Thing. Tableau is constantly being pushed by the community to do new things. When 2020.4 got announced at TC conference ish in October, we got talked about map players. Everyone assumed it was what Mark Reed shared in terms of, and it's great stuff, but being able to layer maps on top of each other. In the last two weeks, Luke Stanky, Sam Parsons, and Adam McCann have demonstrated so much more that you can do with that functionality by transforming it into MakePoint. So if the community is pushing the boundaries of Tableau, you can't afford for your people to stand still. So what I'd encourage you to do is you have to give your people the approval to learn. People are going to be busy. And if they are busy, don't ask them to work at 100% capacity. Take time out of their working week, whether it just be an hour, and give them the approval to say it is fine to take some time out and do a workout Wednesday, do a makeover Monday, but do it in the workplace. But all we ask if you do that is for you to share the learning back with your peers so that they know and they share in the benefit of what you've learned. I'd also identify your champions. So People's passions as analysts, right, probably it's fair to say we're all geeks. So we all love data, but some people love the visualization. Some people love the data transformation. Some people love the engagement with others. So the selling into the business. When you've got someone that's passionate about a particular element of BI, recognize and give them responsibility to be a champion. So that what you create is a subject matter expert that shares their knowledge and expertise with others. So that's how you democratize the skill. You move away from the SMEs being a subject matter expert of one to being the SMEs being an empowerment of sharing their knowledge so everyone uplifts and everyone gains that extended understanding of their knowledge. And give your team time to experiment. So just be aware, success breeds success, and the more successful you are, the more requests you're going to get. But the business will never ask, or very rarely ask, I should say, for new analytical techniques. They will only know what they know. So if they've always seen a line chart and a bar chart, the likelihood is the business will continue to ask for a line chart and a bar chart. It's up to us as BI experts to be aware of the art of the possible and give your team time to be able to showcase the innovation, showcase what is possible with their data, so we're constantly pushing the envelope. It's our responsibility to push the envelope, not the businesses. 
is the business's responsibility to test whether that envelope pushing delivers value and works for them. But don't rely on others to ask for innovation. Make it part of your DNA so that you automatically create it. And one of the best things we do in JLL is peer support and collaboration. And this is particularly critical in COVID times. So we're not an island. People shouldn't be working in isolation anymore. Actively seek feedback and work collaboratively. So in JLL, we're all allocated individual projects, but we use Microsoft Teams to have discussion threads and to give regular updates on our projects so that others can see what it, their peers are doing. It allows others to contribute to the development. It allows others to give feedback, but it also gives us a shared purpose of achievement and pride in what we're doing. So we're no longer just looking at what us as individuals have delivered. We're looking at what our team has delivered and we've got that cohesiveness of delivery. That doesn't need to be complex. We have daily huddles where the team come together for 15 minutes and just give very quick updates on their progress. We hold weekly viz reviews where an analyst presents to their peers, their dashboard, and they ask for feedback. Now that's not formatting feedback. That's feedback about is the dashboard designed appropriately for the business questions? Does it offer the right insights? But also give your stakeholders opportunities to be part of that. So the collaboration isn't analyst to analyst, it's also analyst to stakeholder. And one of the things I would just advise, and I wrote a blog post about this, which I think I called um, perfection paralysis. So you can be pixel perfect and there's nothing wrong with that. But recognize that by being pixel perfect, you are delaying the business, business benefits that your dashboard can achieve. So consider the alternative, which is when you've got a minimum viable product that you're proud of, you believe works efficiently, and the business believe answers the question, consider releasing it and then working on iterations to get it up to the standard that you want it to be. You don't need to wait for three, four weeks of constant tweaking before it can be shared with the dashboard. And the reason I say this is a cultural thing is culturally there has to be the recognition that a dashboard is a living, breathing item. It's not ever a finished product. Seek feedback, but see it as a positive and a chance to improve. And I'm just going to share with you two terms that we use in JLL that actively support that perception of feedback as a positive. And these are inspired by our global um, BI strategy director, Fee Gordon, who's in, Asia, who's in Australia. When we give feedback in JLL as analysts or stakeholders, we encourage them to use the terms I like and I suggest. So actually, we're never opening people up to criticism or fear of failure, we are always saying what is good about a dashboard, but there are still opportunities to improve. And by giving that balanced feedback, we've actually achieved a culture where people welcome feedback and they acknowledge it. They don't fear the criticism or personal attack. And it's also important that that feedback is transparent. So all of our feedback we record on Microsoft Teams, so it's available for anyone to see. And also manage your content releases. So as analysts, consider how we can promote our content to support your end users. So mean that analysts don't just stop at the development of a dashboard, consider whether an analyst should be creating user guides. They should be supporting the training material for critical dashboards and constantly challenge yourself to be available to your end users. So that as analysts, we aren't seen as kind of developing product. We're seen as a partner all the way through so that we are adding value and we are truly are a business partner rather than a service delivery team. And as I said earlier, recognize a product is never finished. Give your analysts the expectation that once they've finished the ticket or they've finished delivery of a dashboard, Allow them time for self-reflection. Allow them maybe a four to six week window after the release so that they can consider what they've done and they can consider the feedback of their users and they can evolve it. 
it's fine to not get something perfect first time. And lastly, on an analyst perspective, review your usage. Postgres is one of the most underutilized aspects of Tableau, in my opinion. Use that to understand what your usage data is showing. When a dashboard becomes underutilized, when someone changes their usage pattern, and as analysts, reach out to them and ask for feedback in terms of why that change has occurred. So that was 10 tips about your analysts. And in the last part of the advent calendar, in another five minutes or so, I'm just going to quickly share how you can invest in your stakeholders, so your users. So as a BI department, recognize it's not just our analysts that we're responsible for, we're also responsible for going beyond the product and investing in our end users and our stakeholders. So we are sharing some of our knowledge about data with them, not so we're trying to get them to become analysts, but we're helping raise their skill and elevate their skills to allow them to effectively see and understand their data and see data as a life skill. So one of the ways you can do that is through positive deviance. So use data to recognize successes, not failure. When I used to work in the NHS, I used to see so many times where data was presented and the first thing a manager would do is look at the data and look at all the rents. Where's all the failures? And then they would immediately start firing off emails to their end users or their, uh, their staff going, you need to be better at this. You failed this. And what that creates is a negative perception of data. Just put yourself in your shoes. When you go shopping, do you ever go back to a shop that you have a negative association with? Probably more times than not, no. So if people have got a negative association with data, why should they go back to data? But if you use data to promote achievements, even by sending out thank yous or lists of teams or people that have achieved their target, people want to be part of that. So they ask why I'm why am I not in it? And then they act on it to be coming in the future. So you can create that positive association, which improves adoption. And just as you did with your end with your analysts, identify your end users that are your champions. And the reason I would do that, as I would say, you would leverage others to help spread the data message. So imagine you put yourself in a frontline person's shoes. If you get the bald geek that you can't identify at Tableau conference in a photo, um, coming to you to be able to say, you really need to use this dashboard. Yeah, five out of 10 people might, li might listen to me if I'm lucky. But if you get their peer who they work with every day and they've built up a relationship with coming to them saying, hey, this dashboard's amazing, this is why you should use it, they're more likely to listen and act. So extend your network beyond just the rounds of the analysts and leverage the champions that are passionate about data to help spread the message. And I would actively encourage you to assign business owners to every dashboard. So every dashboard we develop in JLL has an assigned business owner, and that business owner recognizes they are responsible for being able to maintain their requirements, be able to feed back to us, and be able to sell it and have adoption back to the business. So we've got a defined roles and responsibilities, and by doing it, it means that people don't see BI owning the dashboard, they see it as being a business product. And I think I touched upon this earlier in the analyst, but do involve your stakeholders in development. See them as an extended resource. If someone's asked for a dashboard, actively involve them in the development cycle, share wireframes with them, share iterations with them. And if you've got a complex dashboard that's being used by multiple stakeholders, don't be afraid to have multiple stakeholders engaged in the development. I'm not suggesting you share Tableau with them and show them the inner workings of the calcs. Just don't be afraid to say, hey, here's a concept, here's an idea. What do you think about it before you invest hours of developing something that ultimately might not resonate with them? We we'll start to get towards the top of the tree. So support data literacy as a life skill. Give your end users the ability to read dashboards and to understand that opening it doesn't necessarily mean they'll use it effectively. Give them the ability, not for maths, I'm not saying make it a maths 101, I'm just saying culturally, give them the ability to go beyond the number, 
How do you understand variation? How do you use data positively? How do people act in a way that resonates with your values? And in addition to positive deviance of using data to celebrate success, use data to recognize and reward positive behaviors. So if you've got people that are actively using dashboards and actively making a difference, tell stories, recognize people, say thank you in your newsletters, call out people that are making a difference with data. So you're not just promoting a dashboard, you're promoting the use of it and the difference it makes to the business. And the last one, and I appreciate this can be challenging, but give back. Don't be afraid, if you can, to share publicly what you've done, because it will create a data brand for your organization. And if you create a data brand, you will attract talent. You will stand out from the crowd and you will become a data destination for like-minded people. And one of the ways we do that in JLL is we've sanitized some of our work and created JLL Tableau public profile and started uploading our work so that others can benefit from it. And if you did want some inspiration from the community, hover over the star on Tableau public and you can explore the snowflakes in the viz to identify some community champions when it comes to data culture and some resources. So if you just hover over, I've just called out some of the people that I rely on and I learn from and hopefully it will give you a bigger network to be able to achieve your data culture. So thank you ever so much. Um, and if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me on Twitter um, or on um, my blog site, so visionary blog or visionaryblog.co.uk um, and welcome any questions. Excellent. Thank you, Simon. I think there's a lot of uh, good takeaways from uh, from this one. And since it's already it's published on your um, public profile as well, we can go in there and have a look um, even more in detail if we like, I guess, afterwards. Yeah, please do. Yeah, and that's um, I've been, I've been myself been using Tableau Public uh, not so much to publish uh, stuff, but to to get inspiration and find stuff, as you also saw in the uh, <laughs> in the the presentation I had, um, finding good examples uh, from from people in the community that are creating stuff, uh, always uh, always um, always great. Let's see. Uh, there's some um, some great feedback. It uh, looks like uh, in the um, in the chat. Um, no particular questions. It uh, looks like. Um, uh, should we now see if we have found you, Simon? <laughs> yeah, go on. I'm intrigued to know who people think I am. So yeah, go on. Yeah. What I should should have done or. Um, I didn't have time to do that because I had to pay attention uh, as well. But um, uh, the, uh, the the picture that was sent out, which is this one, uh, I can I can uh, move my marker around and s see what people have suggested at least. So uh, over here, uh, this is not you. <laughs> um, you were there was also some guy all the way in the back here. Let's see if we zoom in. Um, if I can find him again, it was, uh, I think it was a bit older version uh, with a beard as well. Uh, so that was not you. <laughs> um, uh, some even sent in this beautiful guy uh, in here, which is me. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, but I, I got a lot of emails and Simon is actually hidden over here behind that hand. So it was a bit tricky one this time, I have to say. Uh, when we had Sarah, Sarah Bartlett on, uh, that was a bit easier because she's standing, uh, standing all, uh, here in the front. Uh, but let me just see which one was the first one that was correct because, um, yeah, as I said, there was plenty of those who uh, <laughs> went for, for the wrong one. Uh, so I've gotten emails from, um, from all over um, the Scandinavian countries now. And I think that the winner was uh, Derek Belaya. Belaya, 
from um, analytics studio i'm not sure where where she uh, no so, sorry he is located so um derek you can send me a new email with your postal address and t-shirt size and i'll i'll send one over and uh, i guess you're not hearing those send master t-shirts uh, simon that's uh yeah, unfortunately not. But um, well, on that subject, though, Zen Master nominations have just opened. So um, hopefully there will be a um, Scandinavian nomination or two um, for this month. So, um, yeah, do, please do, people, if you um, if you want to be able to nominate some Zen Masters, now's the time to do so. Yeah, I see. I've, yeah, I see. I've seen that, that there's nobody from the Scandinavian countries that has been a Zen Master so far. So that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, let me see. I'm going to close this one now. Uh, I'm going to save the workbook. I've created um, uh, the, the presentation now. As an, uh, I'm going to export that as a packaged workbook, so that will be available. Uh, I'll put put it on my Tableau public profile as well, uh, so it will be available in there. So, people, are you ready to win some Tableau swag, some more? <laughs> so, I'll start up the Kahoot uh, over here. Uh, classic one, there's 215 questions, so uh, we should be, no, it's not. <laughs> so if you have played or haven't played uh, Kahoot before, um, you can either go to kahoot.it or the Kahoot app. Hopefully there will be some people in here. And since I'm the only one who knows all the answers, I'm the, <laughs> the only one who are not allowed to... Uh, to participate. <laughs> it's always uh, interesting or frustrating depends on when you're trying to figure out who the person are in there but some of them are pretty easy to understand that's for sure <laughs> I see that Toby wasn't happy with the the recount. Uh, uh, there was actually a lot of people uh, after the second time I showed the picture that got it got it right, even before I hinted on the right hand side and, and stuff like that. So um, let's see, we are twenty five, and uh, we are. So I'll give it uh, ten seconds. Hi Siri, can you count down ten seconds? No, I normally talk Norwegian to her, so she didn't understand it. <laughs> Five more seconds. So if you will were, were join, you have to hurry. And that should be. Five seconds gone. Good luck, everyone. The first one, there's no points. Now I will just see what people are doing. So the the blue, I guess that's just men uh, who have answered that one. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of people who are who are uh, doing online shopping this, uh, I guess, more this year than ever. Uh, I'm not sure the the ones who answered the green one. Did you actually read what the sentence was, or did you think that it was something uh, the other way around? The biggest gift of all is not to give but to receive. Okay. 
There's five of you who answered that one. So let's start the real quiz. Some holiday related one once first. Well, there was a surprise, uh, surprisingly um, many who didn't know that Bing Crosby was the top selling. Uh, could be, of course, somebody could uh, could have some, uh, depending on when the question was written or not. Uh, I was actually planning on checking this, validating this before I created, uh, put this in the quiz, but I didn't. So if Mariah Carey uh, is the one that is on the top now, it doesn't matter because this Kahoot said Bing Crosby anyways. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a more easy one. Just saw that with the kids last week. And we have some new people on the top, the newbie. There was also something that most of you knew. The Germans for the first with the Christmas tree. Three people have three correct answers. It's a long question there. I see now that I should have put Denmark in there, <laughs> uh, but uh, then again, then uh, that wasn't the really correct, uh, correct answer. But uh, most um, uh, Christmas trees in Norway are actually bought from Denmark. Not sure why. And every year, when Norway sends a Christmas tree to to London and also to uh, to Rockefeller uh, Plaza outside of Rockefeller Plaza in in New York. Uh, there's a big uh, everything in the news and then uh, everybody's complaining because it looks so horrendous because the trip all the way over seas is <laughs> that's why they put so many so many um, candle uh, lights and everything on it so the newbie is still in the lead adam second place and we have three people now from getting close by This is also a, could have been something else in there, but this is uh, uh, borrowed from a French speaking uh, Tableau user group, uh, Kahoot. Um, um, sometimes when you can also say canvas, I guess, uh, but uh, definitely not a table. So apparently there was somebody on the top there that <laughs> didn't know that. They're now out of the list. Yeah, you can, uh, of course, um, um, think about this question in uh, multiple ways. You can use SQL uh, when you connect to, to SQL. That's true, but um, the query language created and uh, uh, what's it called uh, with the C copyrighted by Tableau is the VisQL. Oh, there's a lot of changes going on. Adam is coming back on. Toby Van Kenobi, uh, the best name <laughs> of today. They're going to give you five uh, extra bonus points for, for the name. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I'm just wondering now if this uh, map layers thing, uh, it's not map layers per se, uh, it's the prep in the browser, that's correct. Uh, it's a different name for the, the different map layers in there. So uh, once again, this is copied from somebody else, so maybe it wasn't proof checked enough. Uh, do you have any comments on that, Simon? Do you, uh, if you, I'm not sure what you, if you answered map layers, but... Um, uh, yeah, I'm assuming map layers is Tableau Desktop and this is Tableau Prep, so that's probably why. Yeah, and also when I think about it, map layers is also the layers that we put on uh, uh, that you can put on um, uh, in in the desktop. So yeah, thank you. I just realized that, so now I can relax. You were paying attention. That's good. <laughs> so a bit more tableau related questions. Did you pay attention earlier? Almost everybody, that's good. Not Adam though, <laughs> who just disappeared from the top five list. So Toby, um, you were part of creating this uh, quiz with me. So are you sure that you're allowed to? No, I'm just kidding. He hasn't. You said everyone could play. <laughs> Double points. <laughs> yeah, so Sports with Sunday uh, for those um, uh, three fourths uh, of uh, the people in here, please ch check it out. Um, there's a lot of good uh, community groups out there, but uh, Sports with Sunday is the one Simon is the co-host of. I assume that you were correct on that, Simon, <laughs> so that's good. Double points again. From the first presentation. There's a lot of uh, different, uh, not different, a lot of different uh, questions in here. Uh, sorry, answers in here. Uh, I'm mean, just going to double check now. Uh, was that the correct one, um, uh, Jacob or Elena? Yes, that is the correct one indeed. Yeah. Because uh, there was a lot of, of course, a lot of talk about power apps, power automate. So what did um, the, I see that several people answered that in there as well. Let's see what's happening in the top. Mad Matto is now four in a row. It's pretty close though. What just a thousand roughly points from the first to the fifth place. And we're getting closer. We have um, now five, qu four questions to go. This is just, uh, you, ca you can't count them. It's just a selection of my t-shirts. Yeah, so 29 is the correct answer. This is the oldest one, the one I have on me, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, beta testing from version 8.2. Adam uh, still not on the uh, back on top five, but he's a climber now, so we'll see. Double points. Six hundred thousand dollars. And we have seven people that were correct. 
And uh, surprisingly, Jonathan, you had that one correct. That's uh, really, really good. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, the last two questions are uh, Christmas related. Uh, again, songs. Now it's not just to pick the correct one. We have to find the four words and put them correctly in order matching the song. So now you really have to pay attention in the, in the end here. And all the um, all the ones have to be in correct order to get the correct answer. Used the same one on the handball team that I'm coaching, 13 year old girls, and they were. I just had to tell them, please don't start singing the song out loud because then you're helping everybody else. <laughs> but most of them got it right. Yeah, most here as well 76%. Mama kissing Santa Claus last night. And then we have, uh, well, I think we have a winner, um, even though we have one question left. Uh, the last question is worth 1 million points. No, <laughs> it's just 1000. Uh, but uh, the top three, uh, top three uh, will be, uh, will, will be winning Tableau Swag. So pay attention after this question and um, either put your um, email in the chat to uh, privately to the um, to the panelists or send an email to me with your name and address. Seems that it, this was a bit easier. At least, at least people are answering quicker. Still half a minute to go. Could be that uh, we were 25, I think. So I'll just hang on in case somebody either have dropped out or not. Don't want to skip before. And in five seconds, we will see who came on the podium. 95% were correct. So normally when we are doing this uh, together, then people have to turn up their phones and see. So who had a red screen now? Who, who was incorrect? <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to shame you for having this one incorrect. Let's see. This is the podium. The ball sent on third place. Mad Matto on second and who could that be? Toby Van Kenobi. Congratulations. Runner up, Jonathan and Joe. So the ball sen, um, I guess you have some Tableau t-shirts, but um, uh, you wouldn't mind having a new one. So uh, you have to send me your postal address and um, t-shirt size. Um, Toby, the same. Mad Matto, the same. Uh, if you don't have my uh, email address, I'll uh, put it in the uh, chat window. Now, uh, and I wrote it correctly as well. So perfect, everyone. Thank you with the um, thank you for all the presentations. Uh, this was really fun, uh, interesting, and uh, fun to do a Scandinavian edition of um, the Tableau user groups gather a lot of more people. Um, one thing that's interesting is that um, we all, 
uh, even though we are doing it if just in Norway or we do the Scandinavian one, uh, of course, re reach a larger, larger audience. Uh, the winner of the T-shirt, uh, by the way, is Simon, who found you, uh, Derek, uh, was from Canada. So we have people from all over the world uh, joining uh, today. That was really fun. <laughs> So uh, thank you to CGI who's sponsoring all the postage because this is going to be expensive sending to Canada, UK, uh, Denmark, and I'm not sure where this uh, Dan Matteo name, uh, where, where this person is located, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, have a nice Christmas when that's coming up and we'll talk to you all hopefully next year. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys.